Hey everybody, Sean here from 3M. Thanks for joining us for this video today. This video is gonna be about the difference between uh, some of the bonding adhesives. So the manufacturers may recommend one adhesive over the other, and there could be varying reasons for that. So I'm gonna explain some of the reasons and some of the differences between these adhesives. Let's talk about PPE. Make sure we're always wearing the, the uh, proper protective equipment. I really don't need any for this video here today, um, but if we were, make sure we're using our gloves, our earplugs, our safety glasses, everything we need to do. Also, uh, keep in mind that these videos are for professional settings, such as a body shop that's well ventilated like we're in here. Also, uh, I will leave a link to the safety and warranty information in the description below. So let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about the difference between these adhesives. Now, uh, there's a lot of similarities, a lot of differences, but the main one we're gonna talk about today and focus on is the failure mode of an adhesive. And you know, any adhesive you take, if you bond two things together, you pull it hard enough, it will fail. And sometimes it's really helpful to know how or in what manner that adhesive fails. And sometimes the manufacturers will specify what type of failure they want. So let's talk about the failure modes. So, um, and the reason this is important is some of the manufacturers may call for what they term cohesive failure. And that's what we're looking at here. So if you look at these samples, this is uh, what we call a wedge impact test where we put these samples together and a wedge comes down and drives these, these plates or these uh, coupons apart. And that's why they're curved. The wedge goes through and kind of separates them in this manner here. So when this happens, as you can see, this product has good even coverage on both sides, okay? So we would call that cohesive failure, where the failure was internally in that adhesive, okay? So this is an example of adhesive failure. So with adhesive failure, when these come apart, you can see that all the adhesive ended up on one side, and this is down to bare metal again. Okay, so sometimes you can achieve more strength with this kind of failure, but there's some drawbacks. And the one drawback that some of the manufacturers uh, look at is corrosion protection. So this is the scenario that some of the manufacturers think about. So in, let's say, a moderate rear end collision where the panels will flex, as you know, the inertia travels through those panels and they flex, and maybe the seams flex a little bit and separate where it's really not noticeable. And let's say you're gonna repair that panel versus replace. So now you've got these separated seams that aren't noticeable in certain areas on that panel. Well, if they fail in this manner, where there's bare metal on one side, now we've got a corrosion issue where water could get in there, cause this one side of the panel to corrode and weaken the structure, okay? So uh, that's why the manufacturers, in some cases, want an adhesive that fails cohesively. So if that scenario were to occur, and these come apart a little bit and separate, um, that now we still have adhesive coverage on both sides where we're gonna avoid that corrosion problem. So let's talk about which adhesives do which, okay? So our 8115, recommended by many manufacturers, um, that product gets its uh, extreme strength um, from partially from the fact that it does fail in what we call a mixed mode. It's not really full adhesive failure and it's not cohesive, it's somewhere in between where you can see with these samples, you see a little bit of bare metal there, okay? So we could adjust that formula to do this, but you would lose a little bit of strength, okay? So that's really what we did with this product is this is our 8115, this is the 8116, and because GM and Fiat Chrysler recommend cohesive failure, we specially formulated this product for those two manufacturers to achieve that end result, okay? So this is the 8115 in mixed mode. This is the 8116 with cohesive failure. And you can look that up for in the OEM information, and this is the General Motors Bulletin that explains that they want 8116 used for uh, door skins only, and then they want our structural adhesive, the 7333, used for all other bonding operations on GM vehicles. Now, Fiat Chrysler is a little bit different, 
And this is our bulletin that calls out or, or actually spells out this exact specification from the OEMs. And they call for the 8116 because they wanted that uh, cohesive failure. So Fiat Chrysler uh, vehicles, all 8116 for their bonding. Not just like GM where they have two different, uh, depending on what you're doing. This is for all their bonding operations, the 8116. Now, you can see also that the 7333 structural adhesive fails cohesively as well. Um, and you're gonna wanna make sure that, again, you consult that OEM information so that you're using the correct adhesive. And it may not be what you think it is sometimes because some vehicle makers on one model may use the structural adhesive and on um, another model they may use the 8115 or the 8116. So you really don't know unless you look up that exact procedure all the way down year, make, model, and all the way down to which part you're replacing. They may use one adhesive to attach the roof skin and a different adhesive to attach the quarter panel or whatever you're doing. So look up that OEM information and make sure you're consulting it so that you're making the correct and safe repair every time. Okay, well, hey, thanks for joining me again. Um, as always, leave any comments or questions below. Uh, please hit that subscribe button and ding that notification bell. Uh, if you want more content like this, look us up at 3mcollisionrepairacademy.com. And uh, again, follow those OEM instructions, and we'll see you next time.